Solo Winds Untamed from Westwood Instruments might just be the last wind library that I'll ever need. With so many wind libraries out there, we'll typically get your very standard samples, your longs and shorts, legatos, trills, staccatos. But if you're familiar with Westwood's Solo Untamed series, you'll know that these libraries come with an incredible range of sounds. They've done it with their percussion, their solo strings, solo brass, and now we have these solo winds to get a full untamed orchestra. So if you're looking for really rich wind textures, then Solo Winds Untamed could be a go-to library for you. Now, before we get started, I just want to give Westwood Instruments a huge thank you for sending over a copy of this library so that I can review and discuss it with you all today. If you want to pick it up for yourself, I left a link in the description down below. And as of right now, while recording this video, it's on sale at a special launch price. So make sure you take advantage of that while it's still around. All right, so let's check out what's inside Solo Winds Untamed. Just looking at the folders, we have an individual folder for our individual instruments, and then we have a multis folder. So we're gonna get a flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, and baritone saxophone. And just a fun fact for those of you just starting out, uh, saxophone might look like it's part of the brass section, but it's actually more closely related to clarinets, which is why if included, they're usually found in wind libraries and ensembles. And then looking at the multis, we're gonna get the classics, experimental, improvisations, shorts, and textures. All right, so I pulled up a flute patch just so we can look at the main interface itself, and then we'll go instrument by instrument, taking a look at the different articulations they have. But before we even do that, let's just hear what it's gonna sound like right out of the box. And just that alone is such a beautiful flute sound. So let's take a look at some of the knobs and faders that we get, but let's start over at the microphone mixer first. These instruments are typically gonna default to the room mic signal, and this is pretty much a decatree setup to capture the sound of the room. Then we have the spot mic. This is gonna sound incredibly close up and dry, which is gonna give us that crisp, detailed sound. And then the close mic is gonna fit somewhere in between the spot and room signals. It's definitely gonna give us a bit more breathing room compared to the spot mic, but not as ambient as the room. And then the gallery mics are really gonna push that ambience. And during this recording session, they're placed up in the gallery just so that they can capture the sounds from a distance. So what I would probably do is just find a nice blend between all of these signals, but of course, keep in mind that the more you load in, the more resources you're gonna use. So alone, this gallery signal brings us at 213 megabytes, but once we add in everything else, that's gonna load us up to 0.74 gigs. But I think the combination of these signals gives us a really nice sound. We get the detail from the spot, but the ambience from the room and gallery. Then over to the left, we'll have faders for dynamics and expression and vibrato. You can also control the attack for your longs and shorts. Then for the short articulations, you can also control the tightness and the release. Below that, we can adjust the lows, mids, and highs with an EQ. And 
And then this space area lets us adjust the width as well as the reverb, and we get to pick the location of that reverb. And then finally, over on the right, we have the option to turn on or off the key switches as well as if we want our longs to be mono or poly. So poly lets us play two notes at the same time, and mono we can only do one note at a time. So I actually love that we get a bunch of different articulations in this library. And you'll see as we go along that some of the articulations vary depending on the instrument that you're playing. So taking a look at the flute, we're gonna get four different improv articulations, A, B, C, and D. Then for each one, we're gonna get three separate dynamic layers depending on how hard you press the key. So we've been playing with improv A. Let's just try C, for example. And this will be a quiet dynamic layer. Now I'm going to kind of press it a little bit harder. And then I'll press it really hard. So across these four improv articulations, you get 12 different sounds to play with, and then you have all of your keys to work with as well. And then these improv round robins just kind of cycle through A, B, C, and D. So if you were to play the same key multiple times, it'll at least give you a different sound. Oop, I still set it to mono. Let's turn it on to poly. This Storms articulation is probably one of my favorite ones across this entire library. I really like this Storms articulation because it's just incredibly powerful. You can manipulate the sound of a solo intimate flute all the way up to multiple aggressive flutes. And then let's just try a triad because I think we'll really hear how, how it grows in sound. I love that. And then long is gonna be a very standard patch. Next up is soft air. And that's just a really nice, quiet, uh, breathy sound. Then we have surges soft and loud. So soft versus loud. And then we also have vibrato slow and fast. versus fast. And I think these two articulations are a bit more natural, especially in comparison to the vibrato fader. And I think that's because these are recorded to either be a slow vibrato or a fast vibrato. Over here, we're kind of just manipulating the sound how we see fit. And then I love the thirds articulation. So if you press it softly, you're gonna get a minor third. But then if you press it harder, you'll get major thirds. And that's just something that's really cool. You can really get a blend of sounds if you have multiple pitches at the same time.
And then we have something similar with the fifths and the octaves. Fifth. And then the octaves. Then we're going to have flutter, timbrel trills, and bends. That's really spooky. And then finally, we have our short articulations. So short is kind of like your, just your standard staccato. Swells are gonna be just a crescendo and decrescendo. And then you have your pops, which really kind of remind me of uh, Colenio on strings. and they are based on velocity. All right, let me actually just turn off the link. I'll go to track two, and I loaded it all into one instance of contact. All right, so we will go down to the oboe. And you'll probably notice that this is an almost identical layout to the flute. The only real difference is the number of articulations, and some of them have changed, some of them are the same. So let's just hear some that we have already seen, maybe like improv D. And remember, this is the oboe now. So you can really hear the difference in the dynamic layers there. Just because we didn't do this before, let's try out maybe the reverb as well. And that's the warm hall, but then we also have maybe lost hall. Ooh, that tail is just, it just keeps going. That's almost angelic there. And then if we were to bring it all the way down, might as well just turn the reverb off. This is just the dry sample sound. You can hear a little bit of that release, but it is very, very dry. So let's turn on the reverb, keep it back to around 50, and let's just go with the default warm hall. Then this is the storms patch. Really crazy. Um, and then you have your standard long. Soft air, so again, this will be that quiet, breathy sound. We have the surges, the thirds again. I love that it changes depending on the velocity, how hard you hit it. Um, fifths and octaves. Then we have short. And 
And then we have the swells long, but one that is different that we haven't seen, at least with the flute, is the stopped short. So, so that is definitely a, a, a crisper sound. And that would definitely double great with like the trumpets. Next up, let's check out the clarinets. So we'll go to the clarinet track, scroll down, and there it is. Again, same layout as before, but the articulations have changed a bit. So let's take a listen to the improv. Wow. So those are the improv, the storms, always a big fan of hearing those. It's really incredible hearing the amount of detail that goes into that one articulation. Maybe Surge is loud. Some of the new ones that we have are semitone flicks. We have soft and loud. versus loud. And you know, one of my favorite things about the clarinet is that it creates such a smooth sound, but within the context of this untamed library, we can really hear the, the bite that the clarinet has, and I think that's so amazing. Then we have short again. And just like with the oboe, we have a stop short. And then one of the last newer articulations that we haven't seen, uh, we've seen swells long, but this is swells short. Uh, let's just compare that to long. Really nice. All right, next up is gonna be our bassoon. And then I'll just scroll down. And before we even touch this, bassoon is probably one of my favorite wind instruments, so I'm really excited for these. You get two ends of the spectrum with this library. It's it's insane. Storms, of course. Really nice. You have the long, soft air, which we've seen. Let's try the vibrato, because this one doesn't have fast or slow, so this is pretty set. I 
like that because it it's not a vibrato that gets in the way. You don't really notice it. It gives the the sample a bit more life than maybe just like the long patch. Then we have thirds, fifths, and octaves, which we've seen before. Then we start seeing some of these newer ones. Stutters. And that's really gonna add a lot of chaos to the music, I think. And then we have splutters. And I think that's very similar to stutter, um, but it kind of fills in between notes. And we kind of messed around with it, but I love the, the difference in sound when you're adjusting the dynamic fader. Really cool. And then we're gonna have alternative fingering. And I think that really gives uh, a little bit of an unsettling sound, which I think could be great for your music. And then next up will be the baritone saxophones. And I mentioned this earlier, but the saxophone isn't commonly used in a standard orchestral lineup unless it's specifically called for. But it does share characteristics with the clarinet, which makes both instruments really great for just like jazzier ensembles. So I am pretty happy that Westwood has included it in this win library. So let's take a listen to maybe Improv D. And then in addition to the four improv articulations that we have, plus the round robins, uh, the saxophone comes with extreme improv. So A and B, and just take a listen to what this is gonna sound like. Really, really in your face. So that was A, and let's take a listen to B. I think that's definitely a bit more of a darker tone to that. And then we have, of course, the storms. Comes with long, soft air, uh, surges, soft and loud. Then we have our third, fifth, and octaves. Then a new one that we have is the, the growling articulation. That articulation in particular really reminds me of the extreme improvisations that we heard. That was kind of like a mix between the growling and one of the surges. So then we have harmonics. as well as slap tongue.
And I think that slap tongue is very similar to the pops that we heard with the flutes, but the way that the players blow into the instrument is, is going to be very different from one another. That's going to be your single reed instrument versus a non-reeded instrument. And then next up, we are going to have the multis. All right, so I already preloaded some of the different categories that we saw before. Uh, this is going to be the classics. So let's just take a look at the multis folder. We have classics. Opening that up, I opened up soft surges. And if we just take a look at each instrument, we're going to see that it's all five just set to the soft surges articulation. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like all together. And even though this was a little bit more like of a surging sound, I think in the classics, you'll just get more contemporary articulations. Just taking a look at classic longs, I'm guessing this will be every instrument all set to the long articulation. Then taking a look at 5x5. All right, so these are all going to be set to the, the fifth articulation. So five instruments all set to fifths. Uh, so let's just take a listen to what that sounds like. really love the sound of that. Those are just some of the multis in the classics folder. Uh, next up is going to be experimental. So I already preloaded one of them, which is the disharmony. So let's take a listen to that. That's also going to be baritone sax and flute. unsettling. Okay, yeah, so you can see the ranges if you click each instrument. Let's try splutter stutter. One is set to stutter, one is set to splutter. Really cool. And let's just try triller. Two flutes, one is timbrel trills, the other is also timbrel trills, but this is set an octave lower, and this is set quite a few octaves lower. Oh, that is really cool. It almost feels like you're underwater with that, what is that? That's one octave, two, three octaves lower. I know math, so that's a really cool one. And then next up, let's check out the improvisations. And the one that I loaded in was the all improv multi-patch. This one's pretty straightforward. Every single improv articulation will be played. So all four per instrument. Okay, let's check that out. Let's try four flutes. So I'm guessing this is improv D, this is probably C, B, and then A, okay. And 
And then let's move on to shorts. So these are just going to be set to a lot of the short articulations that we saw. So obviously short, the swells, long versus short, rise and fall, and then popsicle. So I set it automatically to short, but we kind of know what this is going to sound like. Let's try the rise and fall. All right, so we have all of our instruments. All right, this is swell long. This is swell long. Short and long. Okay, so that's the rise and the fall. I get it now. Short and long. Okay. So with that, you hear the the short swells kind of end, and then the long swells end a little bit after it. So it kind of creates a really nice, just ambient effect. Really cool. And then the last uh, folder of multis is the textures folder. And I already loaded up deep reeds. So this is bassoon, saxophone, and clarinet. Really cool. Organ failure. All right, clarinet set to slow vibrato and a semitone flick. That's a bassoon set to soft air, and that's it. Yeah, so I'm I'm loving these multis. And what's great about them is that you can just load them up and you have predetermined sounds if if you don't want to spend the time creating and tweaking, adjust from here, you know? You you have something as a foundation that you can build off of, which is really really great. And let's really take a look at this library strictly from the perspective of a film composer or orchestrator. With a lot of film music nowadays, we're so used to the ostinato strings and the bombastic brass, epic percussion. Everything has to be epic, really, really cinematic. But a lot of people might be a bit more hesitant to write for the winds. Typically, we might see winds uh, being used to double other instruments in the melody or in the rhythmic movement or they might not be used at all. So what I love about this library is that it opens the door for more creative uses for the wind section in your own music. And I think we see that with the improv articulations and all of those multis. So I really think that Solo Winds Untamed might just be my last wind library that I'll need, at least for a while. If you already have winds that you will usually go to, then I think Solo Winds Untamed will be the perfect library to round out your wind collection. And the reason is you get so many creative and unique improv samples that you just wouldn't get anywhere else. With all of these untamed libraries, Westwood is really emphasizing and encouraging the significance of imperfection in your music. You can keep the sound intimate or you can make them unruly. You can use the solo winds or use them as part of a larger ensemble. I think this library really was designed to sound great no matter how you choose to use it. So definitely go check out Solo Winds Untamed and really all of the other libraries that Westwood Instrument has to offer. I hope you got value out of today's video. And if you do want to learn more about Westwood's Solo Brass Untamed library, then you can definitely check out my walkthrough video over here. I'll see you over there. And as always, happy composing.